What is information technology? Information technology has completely transformed your life in ways that you may not even realize. Uh, thanks to IT, we can communicate massive amounts of information to people and organizations across the world in the blink of an eye. Computers power everything from calculators to medical equipment to complex satellite systems and the trading desk of Wall Street. They're powerful and invaluable tools that help people get their work done and enable us to connect with one another. So what exactly is information technology? IT is essentially the use of digital technology like computers and the internet to store and process data into useful information. The IT industry refers to the entire scope of all the jobs and resources that are related to computing technologies within society. And there are a lot of different types of jobs in this field, from network engineers who ensure computers can communicate with each other, to hardware technicians who replace and repair components, to desktop support personnel who make sure that end users can use their software properly. But IT isn't just about building computers and using the internet, it's really about the people. That's the heart and soul of IT support work. What good is technology or information if people can't use technology or make sense of the information? IT helps people solve meaningful problems by using technology, which is why you'll see its influences in education, medicine, journalism, uh, construction, transportation, entertainment, or really any industry on the planet. IT is about changing the world through the ways we collaborate, share, and create together. IT has become such a vital tool in modern society that people and organizations who don't have access to IT are at a disadvantage. IT skills are becoming necessary for day-to-day -day living, like finding a job, getting an education, and looking up your health information. Maybe you're from a community where there wasn't any internet, or you couldn't afford a super fast computer and had to use one at your school or library instead. There are many social and economic reasons why some people have digital literacy skills and other people do not. This growing skills gap is known as the digital divide. People without digital literacy skills are falling behind. But people like you are the real solution to bridging that digital divide. Overcoming the digital divide not only involves confronting and understanding the combination of socioeconomic factors that shape our experience, but also helping others confront and understand those experiences. By getting into IT, you'll help serve those in your communities or organizations and maybe even inspire a new generation of IT pioneers. When I think about solving the digital divide, I can't help but think of all the opportunities and breakthroughs that folks from diverse backgrounds and perspectives in the industry can bring. By bringing more people of color, more women, more ethnically diverse people into the IT field, we're bound to see unique new ideas and products that we haven't even begun to imagine. That benefits everybody. So what's the day-to-day -day work of someone in IT support like? Well, it varies a ton based on whether you're doing in-person or remote support and at a small business or a large enterprise company. And there's really no such thing as day-to-day -day work, since the puzzles and challenges are always new and interesting. But in general, an IT support specialist makes sure that an organization's technological equipment is running smoothly. This includes managing, installing, maintaining, troubleshooting, and configuring office and computing equipment. This program is designed to prepare you for an entry-level role in IT help desk support. You'll learn how to set up a user's desktop or workstation, how to install the computer applications that people use the most, You'll learn how to fix a problem or troubleshoot when something goes wrong and how to put practices in place to prevent similar problems from happening again. Not only will you learn the technical aspects of troubleshooting a problem, you'll also learn how to communicate with users in order to best the system. We'll also show you how to set up a network from scratch to connect to the internet, teach you a thing or two about automation and scripting, and teach you about how to implement security to make sure your systems are safe from hackers and other risks. Remember when I said that a computer is a device that stores and processes data by performing calculations? Whether you're creating an artificial intelligence that can be humans at chess, or something more simple like running a video game, the more computing power you have access to, the more you can accomplish. By the end of this lesson, you'll understand what a computer calculates and how. Let's look at this simple math problem. 0 plus 1 equals what? It only takes a moment to come up with the answer 1, but imagine that you needed to do 100 calculations that were this simple. You could do it, and if you were careful, you might not make any mistakes. But what if you needed to do 1,000 of these calculations? How about a million? How about a billion? This is exactly what a computer does. A computer simply compares ones and zeros, but millions or billions of times per second. Wowza. The communication that a computer uses is referred to as binary system, also known as base two numeral system. 
This means that it only talks in ones and zeros. You may be thinking, okay, my computer only talks in ones and zeros, how do I communicate with it? Think of it like this. We use the letters of the alphabet to form words and we give those words meaning. We use them to create sentences, paragraphs, and whole stories. The same thing applies to binary, except instead of A, B, C, and so on, we only have zero and one to create words that we give meaning to. In computing terms, we group binary into eight numbers or bits. Technically, a bit is a binary digit. Historically, we use eight bits because in the early days of computing, hardware utilized the base two numeral system to move bits around. Two to the eighth numbers offered us a large enough range of values to do the computing we needed. Back then, any number of bits was used, but eventually the grouping of 8 bits became the industry standard that we use today. You should know that a group of 8 bits is referred to as a byte. So a byte of zeros and ones could look like 10011011. Each byte can store one character, and we can have 256 possible values, thanks to the base 2 system, 2 to the 8th. In computer talk, this byte can mean something like the letter C. And this is how computer language is born. Let's make a quick table to translate something a computer might see into something we'd be able to recognize. What does the following translate to? Did you get hello? Pretty cool, right? By using binary, we can have unlimited communication with our computer. Everything you see on your computer right now, whether it's a video, an image, a text, or anything else, is nothing more than a one or a zero. It is important that you understand how binary works. It is the basis for everything else we'll do on this course, so make sure you understand the concept before moving on. You might be wondering how our computers get these ones and zeros. It's a great question. Imagine we have a light bulb and a switch that turns the state of the light on or off. If we turn the light on, we can denote that state as one. If the light bulb is off, we can represent the state as zero. Now imagine eight light bulbs and switches. That represents eight bits with a state of zero or one. Let's backtrack to the punch cards that were used in Jacquard's loom. Remember that the loom used cards with holes in them. When the loom would reach a hole, it would hook the thread underneath, meaning that the loom was on. If there wasn't a hole, it would not hook the thread, so it was off. This is a foundational binary concept. By utilizing the two states of on or off, Jacquard was able to weave intricate patterns into fabric with his looms. Then the industry started refining the punch cards a little more. If there was a hole, the computer would read one. If there wasn't a hole, it would read zero. Then by just translating the combination of zeros and ones, our computer could calculate any possible amount of numbers. Binary in today's computer isn't done by reading holes. It uses electricity via transistors, allowing electrical signals to pass through. If there's an electric voltage, we would denote it as one. If there isn't, we would denote it by zero. But just having transistors isn't enough for our computer to be able to do complex tasks. Imagine if you had two light switches on opposite ends of a room, each controlling a light in the room. What if, when you went to turn on the light with one switch, the other switch wouldn't turn off? That would be a very poorly designed room. Both switches should either turn the light on or off, depending on the state of the light. Fortunately, we have something known as logic gates. Logic gates allow our transistors to do more complex tasks like decide where to send electrical signals depending on logical conditions. There are lots of different types of logic gates, but we won't discuss them in detail here. If you're curious about the role that transistors and logic gates play in modern circuitry, you can read more about it in the supplementary reading. Now we know how our computer gets its ones and zeros to calculate into meaningful instructions. Later in this course, we'll be able to talk about how we're able to turn human readable instructions into zeros and ones that our computer understands through compilers. That's one of the very basic building blocks of programming that's led to the creation of our favorite social media sites, video games, and just about everything else. And I'm super excited to teach you how to count in binary. That's up next. Binary is the fundamental communication block of computers, but it's used to represent more than just text and images. It's used in many aspects of computing, like computer networking, which you'll learn about in a later course. It's important that you understand how computers count in binary. We've shown you simple lookup tables that you can use, like the ASCII to binary table. But as an IT support specialist, whether you're working on networking or security, you'll need to know how binary works. So let's get started. You'll probably need a trusty pen and paper, 
a calculator, and some good old-fashioned brain power to help you in this video. The binary system is how our computers count, using ones and zeros. But humans don't count like that. When you were a child, you may have counted using 10 fingers on your hand. That innate counting system is called the decimal form, or base 10 system. In the decimal system, there are 10 possible numbers you can use, ranging from 0 to 9. When we count binary, which only uses 0 and 1, we convert it to a system that we can understand, decimal. 330, 250, 2, 40, 4 million. They're all decimal numbers. We use the decimal system to help us figure out what bits our computer can use. We can represent any number in existence just by using bits. That's right, we can represent this number just using ones and zeros. So how does that work? Let's consider these numbers. 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. What patterns do you see? Hopefully you'll see that each number is a double of the previous number going right to left. What happens if you add them all up? You get 255. That's kind of weird. I thought we could have 256 values for a byte. Well, we do. The zero is counted as a value, so the maximum decibel number you can have is 255. What do you think the number is represented here? See where the ones and the zeros are represented? Remember, if our computer sees a one, then the value is on. If it sees a zero, then the value is off. If you add these numbers up, you'll get a decimal value. If you guessed 10, then you're right, good job. If you didn't get it, that's okay too. Take another look. The two and eight are on, and if we add them up, we get 10. Let's look at our ask you to binary table again. The letter H in binary is 0110100. Now let's look at an ask you to decimal table. The letter H in decimal is 104. Now let's try our conversion chart again. 64 plus 32 plus 8 equals 104. Look at that. The math checks out. Now we're cooking. 